And look, I really do not want to give you yet another vague definition of what is a server and what is a client. Instead, I will do something unusual. To start, we will imagine a world without servers. So Tom wants to rent out his flat in Zurich on Airbnb. He does his description, takes pictures and so on. John and Mila, they do the same thing with their apartments in Zurich. But here's a catch. They will only save the apartment information on their local machine. They're not going to put it on the internet. They will just save it locally on their desktop. Now meet Tina. She is planning a trip to Zurich and wants to rent an apartment for a few days. But here's the problem. Tina doesn't know Mila, John or Tom. And even if she did, how would she magically access their computers to get the information of the flats? And this is where the server comes in. Instead of everyone keeping their info on their own separate computers, Tom, John and Mila are going to save the information on a centralized computer, the server. Now, Tina doesn't have to hunt down Tom, John and Mila for their apartment information. She can just access the server. But how does she find that server? Tina does not need to know where the server is located physically, but what she needs to know is the digital address of the server, which in that case is the URL, airbnb.com. But simply knowing the address is not enough. Tina also needs a way to talk to the server. And this is where the client comes in. For Tina, her web browser, like Safari, Chrome, Firefox, acts as a client. A client is any device or program that communicates with a server. It could also be the Airbnb app. But let's say she uses Safari and let's see this in action. First, on Airbnb, she searches for Zurich and hits enter. Now, the client sends a request to the server. The browser essentially asks, show me the flats available in Zurich. The server processes the request. It searches its database and finds all apartments in Zurich. And then the server sends back a response. It delivers a list of flats, complete with photos, description and prices. The client then displays these results to Tina. So the browser organizes this data into a user-friendly format for Tina to browse. And by the way, when Tom, Mila and John upload their flat details, they also use the client. It sent the request to the server to save the info. The server stored it in the database and sent back a response, saved. So is a server just a computer sitting in a centralized place? Actually, yes, but the computer you are using right now wasn't built to handle thousands of people like Tina searching for flats at the same time. Your computer would slow down, freeze, or even crash. This is why servers are no ordinary computers. Servers are powerful machines designed to process millions of requests at once, stay online 24 seven without overheating or crashing and keep everything safe and secure, for example, from hackers. So where is this server? The server isn't just sitting in someone's living room. They nowadays often live in massive buildings called data centers, where there are rows upon rows of super powerful computers. You might have also heard of the term cloud, which is just a fancy term for several servers that are working together. In a future video, we will dive deeper into the cloud. In the meantime, if there's another tech concept you would like me to break down, let me know in the comments.